So we just show that this is n no, this, what do we do? Is this set? So we just showed the set was a vector space. Or no, we showed addition. What else do we have to show after addition? Scalar multiplication. So let's try out scalar multiplication and uh, make sure it's closed under scalar multiplication. So let's take any vector v in S. <coughs> this vector is going to have the form, let's see, 0, 1, 0. I'll scroll up for a second and make sure that I get the form right. So 0, 1, 0 plus alpha 0, 1, 0 plus, we use beta 1, 0, 1. Now when I multiply by a scalar, I better not choose alpha or beta as my scalar because those are already in use. So I'll go, I could use an English letter like C, but I'll go with gamma, keep Greek. So any, the way you write a gamma looks a lot like an alpha that is rotated 90 degrees. So gamma or an eight that was, didn't do the limbo very well. <laughs> So there's our gamma. <coughs> and it's important you write your vector comes from the set S and your gamma comes from the scalar, set of scalars, which in our case, real numbers. So now look at gamma V, which is gamma times that vector that's written above. So 0, 1, 0 plus alpha, 0, 1, 0 plus beta, 1, 0, 1. We're supposed to turn it back into the form that would be an S. So I'll distribute gamma here. So our last vector is totally fine because gamma beta is just a new scalar. So that's that last piece of the vector. The middle piece is just fine too because alpha gamma is again a scalar. So what is wrong with the first piece and why it doesn't fit in the correct form? The first form didn't have a scalar. The first form didn't, it just had a zero, one, zero, no gamma in front. So I need to write this, I'll switch over to a blue. So we need to write this as it looks like purple. Purple will work. So I need to fill in these two blanks right here. I just put circles around them. So I need to fill in these two blanks and get it into this form. The one on the right is pretty easy. It's just gamma beta. How in the world do I do this factoring right here? All right, so let's cheat for a minute and then we'll uncheat. So first of all, is this equal? No, what's wrong? Yeah, I just added a zero, one, zero, because I wanted it there. So this is not math. How do I make this true? What can I add in here so it's equal? So I'll do zero, negative one, zero. 
or I could just subtract out 0, 1, 0 like that. So what I did is I added what I wanted and then took it away, which is the same as adding the 0 vector in there. So it's still equal. Now what I have to do is turn all of these into 0, 1, 0 times some scalar. What scalar goes there? So I want you to write down the scalar that goes in there. It's going to be a combination of these other scalars written above. You're just factoring right now. So try to factor out that scalar. <coughs> So we get a negative 1 from the first 0, 1, 0 vector, then a gamma from the second, and an alpha gamma from the third. So we're just factoring those three scalars out. That's all we're doing. And remember, any sum or product of scalars is always a scalar. So that ugly scalar we just wrote down, just another scalar. We can add, multiply scalars, no problem. And is this the form that puts the vector in S? Yep. So we got that. 0, 1, 0 plus scalar times 0, 1, 0 plus other scalar times 1, 0, 1. So it's the right form to be inside of S. <coughs> so it's in S because we got the form right. So what that means, any vector in S times any scalar can be rewritten in the form so it's inside S. And those are the only two things we had to show. So we are done uh, proving S is a vector space. So we can write, therefore, S is a vector space. So when you're writing in math, that's your chance to use words like therefore and thus or thusly, things like that. So therefore is a very good conclusion word to use. So we'll do one more uh, subspace or not subspace question. So I'm going to zoom in way further because we're getting our zoom level messed up. But we'll lose all the stuff on the right. So this time our set S will equal vectors x, y uh, such that x equals y squared. All right, so first of all, let's look at the single equation that defines this, x equals y squared. Is that linear? No. So that's not linear. It's quadratic. That's a pretty good indication this is not going to be a linear object that you're looking at because it's defined by a quadratic equation. However, we're still going to go and try to prove it. Is 0 in S? Definitely 0 is in S, right? 0 equals 0 squared. So 0 is in S. That satisfies the x equals y squared. So that's kind of your easy way out. If zero's not in there, you're like, oh, right away. Zero's not in there, done. Don't need to do any serious work. But unfortunately, zero is not it. Or zero is in there, so we don't get to easily avoid doing any algebra. So zero's in there. We're going to show addition first, and then we'll try multiplication second. So we'll try addition first here. So is S closed under addition? So let's take two vectors, v1 and v2, inside S. So v1 will be x1, y1, and v2 is x2, y2. Now these are inside S, so what that means is both x1, y1 satisfies the equation and x2, y2 satisfy the equation. 
So we'll write that out. And x1 equals y1 squared. And x2 equals y2 squared. So those are the properties that relate the coordinates right there. So let's check v1 plus v2. Easy to compute. So easy to add. Now the question is, do the coordinates satisfy the quadratic equation, the relationship that we wrote above? So is this in S? So we're gonna check. So it should be the case that x1 plus x2 is equal to y1 plus y2 squared. Now I don't know if they're equal, so what I'm gonna do is put a question mark on the equal sign. So I don't know if they're equal or not. We're supposed to show if they're the same thing. <clears throat> Let's foil the right side. So we're gonna try to prove this identity. When we try to show identities, I recommend you start on the complicated side. Usually it's more obvious what to do. So I'm gonna start on the right side. So I know that I can square this. All right, is y1 plus y2 squared just y1 squared plus y2 squared? No. What is missing? Plus two y1, y2. So we got our inside, outside, two y1, y2. So that's foiled out. All right, y1 squared. Up at the upper right, I know y1 squared is x1. y2 squared is x2. So I'm gonna make those two substitutions here. So unless y1 and y2 are zero, there's no way that this equation is true that I wrote on the board. So I just brought down x1 plus x2. Just looking at this, the only way this is true is if y1 and or y2 equals zero. So it's not true when y1 times y2 is not zero. So any questions on that? on that algebra or any of the logical steps right there that we took. Yeah, I just boiled it out. All right, so as long as your y coordinate as long as your y coordinates are not 0, it's not closed under addition. So we don't have to check scalar multiplication because you needed both properties. If one of them fails, you're done right there. You don't have to keep going and checking more. All right, let's get a little bit more concrete. Let's take two actual vectors, add them together, and then see that we're not in S anymore. <clears throat> These two vectors can't have a zero y coordinate. So I can't choose zero, zero. Because if I choose 0, 0, I can add it to 0, 0, get 0, 0, and it will all work out. So I can't have my y coordinates as 0. So what is the easiest vector you can think of that satisfies the equation that does not have a 0 y coordinate? So 1, 1 is pretty good. I'm a little worried. No, I think 1, 1 will actually fail if we add 1, 1 to itself. I think we will not, ha we will not satisfy this equation. So that's probably the easiest vector in there. What's another, what if x is four? Two. 
And it could be plus or minus one or plus or minus two because you're squaring your y coordinate. Uh, so let's, we can try either one, or we can just add these two vectors together. They're both inside s, neither have a zero y coordinate. So let's add these two vectors together, see if it's inside s. So this is an extra check. So we just saw 1, 1, and 4, 2 are inside S. Check their sum. So 1, 1 plus 4, 2 is 5, 3. And now we're going to see is, was it x squared equals y, or what? x equals y squared. So is x equal to y squared? So we'll just plug in 5 for x. Is 5 3 squared? Nope. All right. It should fail any time we try two vectors that neither of which have a 0 y coordinate. So I could take. <coughs> You could have gone 1, 1 plus 1, 1. That would have been even easier, 2, 2. And obviously, 2 is not 2 squared. So you can take any two vectors that don't have y, uh, 0 y coordinates and would have worked. So that's not, not in S, not in S. So we're going to look at row space and column space next. It's a good time to get into a new section, a new page. Look at that advanced technology. It is magic. Do you want to have a good laugh and let it try to interpret my mathematics? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, is it not? They had a thing on here to have it interpret your math, but maybe not on this version. Oh, well. It's supposed to solve algebra problems, but I don't think it's set up for linear algebra. All right, so we'll start with uh, row space. <clears throat> and so we need a matrix, so we'll let, ooh, let A be an M by N matrix. M by N. So if I use this notation before, so this mat just means matrices whose dimensions are M by N and their coefficients are real numbers. So that's what this means right here. So matrices uh, of size M by N with real coefficients. So our row space. So the easiest way to think about it, you're going to look at your matrix where each row is a vector, and it's going to be the span of the row vectors. So row space is the vector space spanned by the row vectors in A. Our notation Wrote it as row of A. So it'll be a function called row of a matrix. And 
these functions are weird because they don't give you a single vector, they give you a vector space. So it's kind of a weird function, it gives you an entire space as the output. Now column space, you can probably see what the definition is going to be. You're going to look at the vector space spanned by the column vectors in A. So that's the vertical vectors. And we'll be lazy with this function, just call it call instead of writing out the full column of A. So that'll be our column space. Now the last section I used the word uh, vector subspace and all I did was I wrote vector subspace is a vector space. That was quite lazy. It's true, but let's get a little more specific. Why do we call it a vector subspace? the word sub comes in from subset. So think about a, a, a space, maybe you have four dimensions in your space, a subspace could be a lower dimensional subset of that space that's also a vector space. <coughs> so a, a vector subspace so we'll call this vector subspace S. Written as a set, it will be a subset of n-dimensional space, which itself is a vector space. So meaning, we use the word subspace because usually if we're going to use the word subspace, we're talking about a subset that's not the entire set. So it's sum of the vectors and enough of the vectors so that you're closed under addition and scalar multiplication. Uh, so a vector subspace is a vector space and is a subset of a larger vector space. So it's probably good to give an example here. Let's do uh, the easiest thing I can think of is a two-dimensional uh, vector space and then we'll look at a subspace that's one-dimensional. So we'll consider xy such that x equals 2y. What is a very good indication that this is a vector space. Aside from I, I want to give you an example that's a vector space, so I alluded to this. It would be nice if it's a vector space. What about this equation indicates that it's a vector space? It's pretty similar to our last equation that we had. It's linear. Actually, now I want to go back and talk about another linear equation that did not lead to a vector space and why it didn't. Somewhere up here, we had a linear equation. So I thought we did. Nope. Ah. Hey, look, we had two equations right here. Are these equations linear? Yep. However, it was not a, it was not a vector subspace or a vector space. What messed these equations up? It looks very innocent, the plus one. So I think somewhere along the way, I think I mentioned the one messed us up somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Because a plus one is not multiplied by our, our scalar. So scalars got messed up. And I think addition was messed up too, because there'd be a plus two um, instead of a plus one. All right, the reason that <coughs> this is linear, but when it's not homogeneous, we call it affine linear. So this is not a homogeneous equation right here. And that's important 
when it comes down to making a vector subspace. So this is what we call an affine linear, which is another way to say non-homogeneous. And if your condition is not homogeneous, you are most likely not going to have a vector subspace. Now we'll jump back to where we just were. And let's use that insight. Is this linear equation homogeneous? Yep, there's no constant term, or the constant term zero. So this will be a vector uh, subspace. All right, let's look at the, oh, I haven't even mentioned the word dimension. Let's not look at the dimension. So the set S is a subspace of R2, just because of the way that the elements were defined. They're two-dimensional, so it's obviously every element in S is a two-dimensional vector. So as sets, everything in S is in R2. Can you think of an element in R2 that is not in S? So what's a vector that is not in S? It should be pretty easy to come up with one. All you have to do is break this equation. Well, x equals, so I want a vector that's in R2 and not in S. So you gotta give me two numbers who don't satisfy X equals two Y. One, one, that sounds good to me. It's pretty easy. Zero, zero wouldn't work though. Uh, one, zero, zero, one, 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 negative one, one, all these. There's an infinite number of choices that would work. Unfortunately, there's an infinite number of choices that would not work. So one, one is in R2 and not S. So let's get a little more mathy. Actually, I'll just use a regular minus sign. So that's a way to write that a little bit better. It's in R2, but not S. So it's in R2, take away S. I can graph out S right here. So here's R2 as a graph. What will all the vectors look like in S? It's a subspace and is linear, so they're going to form a line. We already said zero is in there, so the origin's in there. What other point is in there that's easy to one graph? Two. One, two, I think two, one is in there. So over two, up one. And what other, what's another easy point? negative two or negative one negative two or it could go positive two positive four positive three positive six so what type of an object are we forming a line, a line through the origin whose equation is on the board we're used to seeing y equals half x but i think by this time you should be okay looking at that equation and graphing it out so graphing it out you're just forming a line through the origin. And this line, every vector in S, is going to fall somewhere on this line right here. So visually, this is what a subspace looks like. It's a linear subset. Now I took, in this case, this is the lowest dimensional example I can give you that wasn't trivial. So I took a two-dimensional space with a one-dimensional subset. We could look at a three-dimensional space. There are you could have a one-dimensional subset, which would be a line through three dimensions. You could have a two-dimensional subset, which would be a plane. Either of these, no matter which one, you always have to add the origin in there. So it's gotta be a line through the origin, a plane through the origin. You can also have a zero-dimensional subspace. Zero-dimensional is kind of boring. You always have to have the origin, and a zero-dimensional subspace is the origin and nothing else. 
Why is the origin a subspace? Let's look at that. So we'll write it in set notation with the only element in set notation like this. So y is 0 a sub space. Doesn't even matter what dimension you're in. All we're going to do is check is addition, is it closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication. Those are the two things we have to check. The only vector in here is 0. So I'm going to add two, any two vectors in the set, which is a little silly, because any two vectors is grab 0 and grab 0 again, add them together. What's 0 plus 0? Zero? Zero. 0. And 0 is in the set. This is a very trivial example. So 0 plus 0 is 0. And now that was any, <laughs> that was any vector 0 in the set that had only the vector 0 in there. This is a little silly to write. It's like take any card. Well, you have one card in your hand. <laughs> well, yeah, so you can take any one you want. <laughs> It doesn't really work out, and it's logically correct, but morally questionable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're going to do any vector zero in this in this set, and any scalar. Now, scalars can be any real number. What is any scalar times a zero vector? zero vector. So in this case, we again get back to zero. Not because our scalar, but because of our zero vector is the reason we're getting back to zero. So we just showed this is the smallest subspace you can have. So we just showed closed under plus and closed under, I shouldn't write a dot, I'll just spell it out. Scalar molt. So let's look at, we just defined row space and column space. Let's look at a specific example and write down the row space and the column space. So our example We'll let the vector a equal 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 3, negative 3. So let's go column, column space first. So describe the column space of a. So we need to know the definition. <coughs> So you're having new definitions, so make sure these make it on your cheat sheet, or you've done enough problems that you don't need them on your cheat sheet. Row space and column space, I think, are somewhat obvious definitions, but we're still going to scroll up, make sure we get them right. There is an important, we're going from column space, so the important word here is spanned. So I'm going to grab the column vectors, in this case there's two, and it's the span of those two vectors. So that's all we're going to look at span of the column vectors. So I'll write that out here. Span of column vectors. And now we'll write it out properly. So it's the span of 1, 0, 3, comma, negative 1, 1, negative 3. So that's written as a span. Now, the definition of a span, who remembers the definition of a span? You can earn zero jeopardy points. It's multiplying by alpha and adding together. And what, what do we call that, multiplying by alpha and adding together? Linear combination. So we want all linear combinations of these two vectors. So we'll write that out in set notation. <coughs> so it'll be alpha 1 times 1, 0, 3 plus alpha 2 times negative 1, 1, negative 3. 
such that alpha one comma alpha two are any real numbers. All right, so that is the column space described right there. So we already proved spans are sub, uh, subspaces. What is the vector space this is a subspace of? So this would be a subspace of what vector space? Almost. So it'll be R what dimension? Three. It'll be R3. Three. Why R3? Three? The so all these vectors will have three components or three dimensions. Now just looking at this, we have two vectors. We will see this relatively soon. There's no way we're going to get a three-dimensional space out of this, so we will these vectors are linearly independent, so we're going to get a two-dimensional subspace of a three-dimensional space. So in this case, we'll be looking at a plane inside of three space, is what this will look like. So this will be two-dimensional subspace in a three-dimensional space. All right, so that is column space. Now we'll look at row space. So we're still going to be looking at a span, but now we're going to look at the span of the row vectors. Now it's a little bit tricky because you have to read them left to right and then write them vertically. So our first vector is 1, negative 1, but I want to write it vertically the way I always write vectors. Well, the way I almost always write vectors, except when I write them horizontally. You could write it, if you want to write them horizontally, I recommend you use diamond notation like this. If you want to write them horizontally, you're more than welcome to, but for most purposes it's better to write them vertically and horizontal. And then we got zero, 0,1 and then three, negative three. So that's a span right there. This is a subspace of what vector space? R2. R2. So we know it's R2 because vectors have two coordinates, x, y coordinates. So it's gotta be a vector, uh, subspace of two dimensional space. Do you think we need three vectors to span two dimensions? Nope. So we got an extra vector in there that we don't need. I believe we can we can eliminate one of the three vectors. I'm going to eliminate the wrong vector and we're going to see why. <coughs> so this is not equal to the span of these two vectors. Why is that? So they're already scalar multiples. So I can already take, let's just keep, let's look at the easy one. The easy one multiplied by three gives me the other vector. So the second vector is extraneous right here. What that means is I can throw out a vector, but what I'm going to throw out is the one I can get from a combination of the other ones. This is a super easy combination. It's three times the first vector gives me the third vector. So I don't need the third vector. So as a span, it's exactly the same as span of these two vectors. Because again, I got the third vector as a combination of the first two. It was really just the first vector times three. And remember, spans include all linear combinations. So you, if I can make one of the vectors from a combination of the other ones, you can throw it away. It doesn't give you more. Uh, it doesn't give you more dimensions or more uh, a more bigger span. So that vector will be extra.
We have another way to describe this situation happening. So if we looked at these three vectors right here, would you say they're linearly independent? Nope, because I can make the third one with an easy combination of the first two. So these vectors are not independent. So what we're going to see pretty soon is if you have a span of linearly dependent vectors, you can throw away vectors until you have independence. So you can find your vectors that are combinations and you basically throw those out. And that will be called a minimal spanning set, which will be called a basis. So that will be the next topics we're going to get into. So we have a theorem if matrix B is row equivalent if B is row equivalent uh, to A then row B equals row A I don't think I've used the word row equivalent yet. So let's define that right now. So two matrices are row equivalent if uh, elementary row operations can be performed taking one matrix to the other. So if one matrix can be, uh, what's the right word, row operated upon, can be transformed by row operations, into the other matrix. So that's row equivalent. So what that means when you're doing row operations, every matrix you write down in that problem is row equivalent to every other matrix because you got to it from row operations. And all that theorem says, row operations don't change your row space.